Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Thank you so much for taking the time to to come and chat with me today, Marie. And I just thought this would be a wonderful opportunity for you to share you know, it was great to hear in your comment that you, uh, if you just helped one woman, it would be worth it. Yeah. And, and I just thought it, and that was always my mentality as well, as if, you know, I only helped one woman, it would, be, it would be worth it. So I just wonder if you might even just give a bit of background as to your experience from reading Heal Endometriosis Naturally without painkillers, drugs or surgery. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, the, well, I, to go back, I mean, if we go, we're going back sort of 20 years with the pain, um, I started off having colcoscopies, which of course never diagnosed anything because they won't find it with colcoscopies. Then had um, repeated visits to the doctors. I'd been on microgynon um, and another pill. I can't remember which one now. Since I was about 17 years old, um, always had problems even whilst I was on the pill. Um, but obviously, I realise now the pill was probably causing the problems. Um, then in 2009. Um, I had a first laparoscopy where they initially diagnosed it. I then got called back in for a second one in 2010. Um, I've actually got the consultant's notes here that when I first read it, it just to read what he put and to realise how bad it actually was yeah. um, was quite a shock uh, yeah. because you just you just get on with it, don't you? And you just deal with it day in day out but to read that I'd got it was it's severe at grade four I've got endometriomas um my bowels completely I did and everything was stuck my womb my ovaries my bowel they even found some in my rib cage gosh um so it's I'm literally riddled with it um they managed to free off most of it and then that was 2000 and 20th of July 2010 I had that surgery yeah um I then had three round we'd been trying to conceive I was with my ex-partner at the time and we'd also been trying for children and uh 2011 to 2012 saw me going through three grueling IVF cycles which uh didn't work sadly um that was when I kept going back to the doctors and they kept saying, you know, it'll get, you know, you just got to kind of live with it. And I thought, well, I can't live like this. It's not fair. I, I shouldn't have to. Nobody else seems to be going yeah. with this. Um, and then in September 2013, they decided that the Mirena coil would be the way forward for me because of the amazing results that women with endometriosis had seen from it. Yeah. The minute that was put in. I immediately knew I didn't like it. The pain for three days was unbearable. Um, Then the nausea started, then the migraine started, then the 20 days a month bleeding started. Um, The weight gain, no sex drive, um, the bloating. I would bloat up two sizes, two dress sizes easily. Um, So I became socially isolated. I couldn't go out. Um, I didn't want to go out because I looked horrendous, felt horrendous. Um, and whenever anybody asked me how I was, I had nothing else to talk about than chronic pain. Um, I just, I thought I can't go on like this. So back to the doctors, three months after I had the call put in, I demanded it be taken out. I was told, mm-hmm. no, it needed to settle down. Um, I had to give it time. It might take six months to a year. I went to family planning clinics. I went back to um, the company that I'd gone through through work to have it fitted they wouldn't take it out because again they said it needed just to settle three and a half years later um and me actually going into the surgery and saying if you don't take it out I will remove it myself um they finally saw and took me seriously and booked me in for a a removal um and I haven't looked back that was the day that I told them I read my twin sister actually put me on to you so I have 
her to eternally thank. Basically, she she was one that actually told me I had an autoimmune disease. The doctors hadn't even told me. Yeah. Um, I couldn't understand why I'd got this. I couldn't understand. I kept saying, why me? You know, why have I got this? What have I done um, to deal with the IVF failures? All my friends having babies at the time I was going through IVF, so I lost friends because they couldn't cope with my ability or lack of ability to engage with them with their yeah. joy um so it's one of the most fundamentally life-changing things i've ever been through um, yeah. and to to for my twin sister to put me onto this book that the minute i read it i thought my god if i don't if i don't try this this yeah. is going to be the rest of my life um chronic pain you know not wanting to go out i'm a social butterfly i love socializing i love going out um and to be basically stuck in bed taking time off work um i couldn't cope with people's pity that's the other thing as well um especially when the ivfs failed that was just hideous yeah um so yeah wendy i'm sorry it's taken me so long to review the book actually because i've actually found it quite an emotional journey i still struggle to talk about it because it's so yeah raw still even now with the two years on but mm. i'm a completely different person now my eating habits have changed my ex i do crossfit now i mean i couldn't even have considered that kind of exercise because of the lack of energy i had yeah two years ago um every, my relationships have changed I, I got rid of all the toxicity as your book as your book says and it's I I look back now and I just think, my God, why didn't I read this sooner? Why didn't why nobody told me that it was an autoimmune disease? Why none of the doctors, you know, when I said about it and they just their answer when I said I was going to follow your um, guidelines was that it's not British British Medical Association approved. (laughs) They couldn't couldn't kind of support me in it, and I just thought, my God, that's unbelievable. Yeah. all I'm saying is I'm going to go clean eating, try and implement an exercise regime when I've got the energy, once I've healed a little bit. Yeah. Um, and that was the day I just thought, I can't do this anymore. I can't keep going to these people who are just, they're not helping me. Yeah. They're not helping me. Um, so I, I, found, I sought out um, an acupuncturist. I have an osteopath now that I go to. Um, and that's it. That's the only kind of interventions I have. Um so again, I literally cannot thank you enough, and it's 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 amazing to be able to talk to you. Amazing. <sighs> oh well, I am so proud of you. By the way, you know, well done you for 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 taking the action and 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 being open to the book and then following it. And your story is so you know common. Sadly, there's so many women. You know, but but isn't it amazing that you know you, you're here now sharing your story, um, a success story. And I'm so pleased. And, and this is why I, I wanted to share with women what worked for me, because you know my story. I was Doctors kind of made out that I was a hypochondriac and there was nothing more they could do with me, yet I ended up bedridden for, for three years. So, And I know when I started to get better and I did it on my own, I never wanted any woman to have to go through what I went through. But what an amazing story, Marie. I hope you feel really proud of yourself. Yeah, I am. And I think that's the... Thing I, whenever I speak to get the ladies, I, I was actually I met a lady at a, a wedding reception I went to quite recently, and we just got chatting. And she's an incredible lady. Um, she's also been diagnosed with similar symptoms. She has the same conditions you have. Is it ad- adenomyosis? Adenomyosis, yeah. yeah. So she has that. So I've actually put her on. I put her onto the book straight away, and I just said you need to read it. Um, so that's you know even if she just takes something from yeah. what I've been through and you've been through and the other ladies that we come into contact with I just I, I hate that we've all suffered so much and the, yeah. I was diagnosed quite late I mean I'm 45 now I wasn't diagnosed until well seven eight years ago so possibly things were a little bit too late for me then I mean with the child issue that's been hard because yeah. people expect you to it's just natural natural progression is that you you get have a relationship you get have children and when that doesn't happen it's people don't kind of know how to talk to you and what to say mm-hmm. and um i kind of felt that i was being sort of defined by the endometriosis and the IVF, yeah. and it, i just thought this isn't me i'm not i'm not a negative person i've, I've no. managed to 
you know, I'm a half full kind of girl. Everything, yeah. you know, I can try and draw positives, but when you're constantly battling your own body day in, day out, yeah, um, and you just you just get to the point where you think, is this it? Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that said, it's, it's, it's when endometriosis is the boss of you and your body and your life and it completely consumes. And I think that's where the, the condition is so poorly misunderstood by um, everyone out there who doesn't have the condition. You know, when someone says that they have cancer, people get, you know, that it's you know, devastating and, and debilitating. But endometriosis is so pure, poorly understood and this whole concept that it's normal to have pain with your periods. It's not you know and then endometriosis just goes on to a whole nother level of you know um, completely destroying your life and consuming your life and then of course when it starts to interfere with infertility and things like that as well it's devastating and you then go through this grieving process you know of not only you know not that that loss but everything else that you've lost you know your life your friends and, and the quality of life becoming a recluse isolated and then to have to fight to be believed and fight to get support and fight to get help that's very emotionally exhausting and and devastating. Yeah, it is. And I, th- I mean, I've got some amazing friends. I have to say, I'm very blessed in that respect. The friends that were kind of through me. Yeah, I had one friend actually read up on the condition and tried to understand what I was going through. Um, but she didn't kind of when I, especially going through the IVS as well. You know, you're kind of in a quandary of do you tell people? If you tell people. What do you tell them? When do you tell yeah. them? And then I had friends that would get annoyed with me because I hadn't told them that I was going through it. And yeah. it's such a long, hideous, drawn-out process. And for weeks, there's nothing to tell people. But you're dealing with your emotions of, you know, having to inject every day. And then the egg transfer, the egg collection, the transfer, does that work? Do you tell people then? And yeah. you know, I had people saying, well, why didn't you tell me? I'm like, that, but you wouldn't tell me, you know, when people conceived naturally yeah you know, most people normally wait till three months but that's right it becomes so clinical and um this all the emotion is almost taken out of it it becomes almost like you you're not even in your own body you're yeah all this stuff is being done to you that's right you've got no control over it at all other than agreeing to go through the, the blasted thing in the first place and it's yeah. um yeah i think if i could if I knew then what I know now, I probably wouldn't have gone through the IVF because it just, you wouldn't go back to a shop. I kind of likened it to, if you bought a, if you bought faulty goods, you wouldn't keep going back time and time again to the same yeah. shop to buy the yeah. same goods. And um, all the time you're pumping yourself with those hormones, that's just, that's probably just added to, that made everything probably worse anyway. Yeah, and, and it's like the surgery, isn't it? You know, that I, I have women contact me who've had 12 surgeries, 16 surgeries, you know, and I'm just like, you know, if it's not working, stop, you know, it, it, you know, that especially the, the surgery and the drugs and the painkillers when they're, they're making you ill. And they're, I mean, ultimately, the medical system has designed the painkillers, drugs and surgery just to manage the symptoms of the condition and not to get to the root causes of what's causing the inflammation and the pain and the hormone imbalance yeah. um and it's that 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 saying the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result and i think that's where it, it's that lack of support in those arenas that just cause abject distress yeah it really is like i mean i the other problem was i didn't have any doctors at my i was at a, a sort of largest surgery and even though i was seeing the female kind of gynae doctor yeah there was no not like expected sympathy that's not you but you just but just compassion would be nice this little compassion yeah. yeah just to be supported and um i just wish somebody had told me what it was and why mm-hmm. i got it there was just, it was just so, so so when your twin sister told you about the autoimmune disease and, and suggested reading the book what what was it that made you shift because we're all conditioned aren't we that you know you get ill you get sick you go to the doctor, the doctor's supposed to make you better. If the doctor can't make you better, then he puts you onto a specialist or, or a surgeon and then they make you better. So what was it that just caused you to come over that, that have, a, have that epiphany of like, I can't keep doing that painkiller dogs and surgery anymore and then kind of be open to the book? Because I think that's where a lot of women struggle. I know I had to have, I end up having six surgeries before I thought, holy moly, Wendy, this is not working for you. You're getting worse. You're getting more conditions. You're getting sicker. You're getting 
mitochondria dysfunction, you know, your chronic fatigue, your, I was getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And that was when I, uh, you know, for me, it was when I cut my finger and I noticed it was starting to heal and scab over. And then I thought, well, my finger is healing. Why are my insides not healing? And that's when I thought I have to do something different, you know? So what was it for you that caused that mental shift? Well, my twin actually suffers. She's got a PMDD. So we both have problems with our cycles. Um, so what, what is that for anyone who's, who's listening? I can't actually remember what the, it's the premenstrual dysmorphia um so she i mean it's horrendous her moods are horrendous her pain is bad um anxiety is through the roof um and it's cyclical it's every single month with her cycle um so she's already done quite a lot of research into that kind of thing um and she also put me on she said it's auto you've got an autoimmune disease you're you're estrogen dominant which is you, you should they should be balanced you know you shouldn't be dominant in one or another it should be a balance and I thought yeah she's right and so I started looking into it and again like I say just frustration that the doctors hadn't advised me in the first place but um and yeah I came across your book and I thought well, what's what what is the worst that can happen yeah is <laughs> I can maybe feel a little bit better um you know yeah, it's that nothing could happen, but I cannot keep going to the doctors month in, month out. I was spending a fortune on prescriptions. Yeah, um, I, I couldn't. The, the, the last surgery I had where they lasered me, um, it was hit the pain afterwards. Yeah, it took six weeks to recover. Um, the, the pain was. I thought I can't. They're saying, oh, you could go back in for another laser, and I thought no. Why would I want to put myself after the IVF? So the lasering didn't work anyway because the yeah. IVF didn't work. And I thought, I can't, I can't put myself through that again. It, it was just too hideous to even consider. So reading your book, and I just thought, right, so if I can go organic with my meat, I'm a, I'm a meat eater, I can't, I can't keep off my meat, unfortunately. But So I've gone organic with the food where I can. Um, yeah. I've increased my vegetables. I eat vegetables I never even knew existed <laughs> or even how to cook them. Um, I'm no domestic goddess, that's for sure. Um, but it's keeping things simple, um, you know, and it, that immediately took the stress off. And I think, and also with my relationship with my ex-partner, I mean, unfortunately, we the IVF took its toll on us and we yeah. did eventually end up splitting. Um, but I realised as well that our relationship had become toxic um, yeah. because of Probably a lot because of how I was without the endom- throughout with the endometriosis. Yeah, you're not yourself. You can't be yourself, mm. and when you're trying to be something to everybody, you you're not taking care of you. Absolutely. Um, and he was amazingly supportive, and we're still really good friends now. But I have moved on. I'm in a different relationship now, um, and it's that all happened within the space of seven months. So I st- I, I had the, the coil out. On the 16th of May 2016, having read the book from April to May, um, by October 2016, my life was completely different. Everything was changing. Um, I lost I lost two and a half stone in seven months. Wow. Well done, you. It's amazing. I know I have women who come into my... Well, some women read my book and they need more support and, and need more guidance. And I, have, I offer a 12-week online foundation program now. And I had a lady who finished that and lost 20 pounds in 12 weeks. And she was eating three times as much food. But of course, the difference was it was, and she's like, I'm loving this food. And it's like so easy to eat. And I thought it was going to be so hard. And and my pain's gone. She was having pain scores of 10 out of 10. And they went right down to zero, you know. And so I think what's so lovely about speaking to you, Marie, and thank you so much. I mean, for those who are listening, you know, Marie uh, reached out and, and, um, I think I'd posted something on, on the, the Facebook and Marie had put a very lovely review on about the book. And that's why it was, it's, I felt it was important to chat to, to, to you here, Marie, because, you know, you're a, l- a real person, you know, you've yeah. been, you've been there, you've been in the wars, you've been in the trenches with endometriosis. And, and I feel that every woman's story who has been there needs to be shared. We, you know, when we're in it, we don't know there's any other way. We just, we, we just get sucked along like a medical machine conveyor belt. And even just hearing you say there was a female gynecologist, but got no compassion. Yeah. It's the most, I, I, I try and I'm writing another book actually in the process of just about committing another book called quiet strength, embracing the emotions, empathy, and energy 
you know, while you're trying to heal your endometriosis, because what, what is the untold story for many women with endometriosis is that emotional trauma of having to go through all these treatments and go through all that kind of like desperately wanting somebody to help you. Yeah. And then not only not getting the treatment or getting treatment and not working, but being made to feel that there's something wrong with you because it's not working. Yeah. And this is why it's so important to get this message out to women that there is another way. It's not a quick fix. It takes time. But hearing your story, that's just amazing. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can't, I wish I could, I wish you could see me because I'm, I like to think I'm the, the picture of health now. Um, but it's, I refer to a book as now my Bible. I still have <laughs> the odd flare up um, when I've eaten that. I'm still a complete sugar freak. So I do still love my chocolate and cake and, you know, all those naughties. But I know when I've overdone it because I will have pain the next month. But uh, I'm, I just revert back to the book. I remind myself why I read it in the first place. Yeah. I put myself through what I've gone through over the last sort of 10 years, really. Um, and yeah, your book, is, it's on my Kindle constantly. I keep it on certain chapters that I just refer back to. Oh, wonderful. Well, we'll need to get, we'll need to get you on to do a video one as well so we can put it onto the YouTube channel. But yeah. I think, I think it's amazing what, what you're doing and, and what I'm hearing, which excites me for you. And I know you've got this now is that you're, some in the community are referring to themselves as endo bosses. They're an endo boss. And I hear that you're an endo boss because you are the boss of your endometriosis. You understand the connections. You understand the, the foods or the products or the, the people or the environments that flare up your body, that, that affect and impact your body. And it's a weird concept for us in the West, but in the East, it's, you know, they get that we're a whole body, whole person type thing. It's not just an organ. Whereas in the West, they deal with you just as a body part. And that is very disconcerting and upsetting, you know, but I'm hearing that you really, you really get this now. You really understand that you have the power and control that, that you felt that you gave out to other people before. I did completely. The medical profession, without doubt, and it's, you know, you, your book says it, the, the, the pharmaceutical industry in the Western world is the biggest grossing turnover business yeah. in the Western world. They're keeping us sick. Yeah. It's simple. Um, my, my daughter my daughter went to this comedian where I, I live in Edinburgh and there's the Edinburgh Festival on at the moment and she came back and I have to go and see this comedian and take my notebook and write what he's saying but he, he was saying how he was taking the uh, the mickey out of you know joking about the pharmaceutical industry and 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 he says oh this new intern comes into pharmaceutical industry uh, into the office in the morning just ha- new from university and says right how are we going to cure people how are we going to help people get well and the managing director goes no we don't want to do that we want to keep them sick because if we keep them sick we earn lots of money yeah. we don't want to make them well and of course that's what really that freaked me out when I really understood that because you know and I didn't realize that we could take back power and control I didn't realize that we you know just with small changes small adjustment mindset and the support you can make huge changes in your body and how you feel in your health yeah completely and it's it was that realized I think I had to channel the anger literally because I was so angry that nobody yeah was helping me nobody I wasn't feeling any better I was just getting worse yeah um, I thought, you know, at the time, what, so the we, we call was taken out, what, uh, 2016, so two years on, and I thought, for all that time I suffered, and, yeah. you know, for what? To I know. Somebody just to get more prescription money out of me, and like I say, unfortunately I still suffer from the migraines, that's the one thing that I've been left with, that's the only... Well, we, we, we can have a private chat about that as, as my gift to you. We can have a wee one-to-one, and, and we can get to the, to the root of that, because there's always a reason, the cause and effect... But it's interesting you talk about the coil. I got told when I was being wheeled in for my sixth surgery, my last surgery, that the nurse who was lovely said to me, you know, because I was under huge pressure to get a coil and I was frightened. I didn't want any uh, alien metal object inside my, my body because no. I knew my body was highly sensitive. Anyway, I didn't know what I knew then, uh, now what I knew then, but she said to me, do you know they get 700 pounds per coil that they insert in your uterus? Yeah. I, I can believe it. 700 pounds. And she said all the doctor, all the surgeons have convinced every nurse in the ward to get a marina coil. Yeah. And I felt like I wanted to throw up because, I mean, this is not all medical professionals and this is not all surgeons. So I'm, I'm putting that disclaimer out there. You know, there's some really great ones and some, some really genuine ones. But as in life, there's some really 
you know, questionable individuals who are doing things for the wrong reasons. And I think people need to make decisions based on all the information. And I think what concerns me at the moment is, you know, there's one route, there's one pathway and it's a medical machine and it's a conveyor belt and you can get stuck in it as you and I did and lose decades of our lives. You know, I, I lost decades of my life, no quality of life, couldn't plan anything. And now I can because I took a different path. And that to me is I want to get in front of these, you know, the medical, British Medical Association and, and, and these doctors and their training and say, if what you're, you know, um, pre- prescribing women isn't working, you have a moral obligation yeah. at least to say, have you considered a natural route? You know, if that's all they say, I believe they have a moral obligation to that so that women know that there might be another option. Well, there is another option. Yeah. And you and I, and I've had 34 women come through my program. I'm regularly getting emails, more and more emails now from women sharing their successes. So it's not just you and I, there's more and more and more women. And I really want this to to be, you know, the start of, of the next thing. You know, this is this is this is the other way. If if painkillers, drugs and surgery doesn't work for you, there is another way. Because I think what what I'm hearing from your story as well as mine is the doctor's just kind of like, well, you just have to put up with it. Yeah. And that is and I know women ending their lives because of those statements. Yeah. And that deeply upsets me too. Yeah. I mean, when, when I went back, uh, repeat, I was back every month, a month and a half saying, you know, I've got this symptom, I've got that pain. Um, and I was basically told that whilst I was bleeding for 20 days a month, had the migraines, put on weight and had no sex drive, my pain score had reduced. So that was an improvement. I was like, that, it's not an improvement. You've just no. had different symptoms. And it, yes. Um, yeah, if, well, like I say, if, if there's anybody out there that's listening to this, and uh, like I say, I hope we can get another one where I can get this computer of ours to work. Uh, I'll try my phone next time. Um, I just, I would implore you to try this because it's, I cannot believe the difference. I literally couldn't believe the difference and how quickly as well, actually. Yeah. I mean, yeah. six months to lose two and a half stone and all from changing my eating habit. You know, the sugar intake, wheat, I don't do wheat hardly at all now. Good. Um, cheese, that was a big thing to give up because I didn't yeah. have cheese, but again it's no good for you dairy particularly, I only drink coconut milk now so excellent. Wendy I can't, I'll say it again I can't, cannot thank you enough oh well I'm all I... to talk about it so it is, it's wonderful to actually be having this discussion with you it's amazing actually, thank you I know, well I'm feeling emotional for you because it's such a joy and, and even when you, you said to me if it just helps one woman and that's where I felt like I would sit up at night, stay awake all night going, I have to, I mean, it was, I'll be honest, it was terrifying putting everything in a book and putting myself out there because yeah. I was naturally an introvert. So this, I've had to get deeply out of my comfort zone to share this message. So I thank you for, for coming on today. And, and this will be going out, you know, to the Facebook groups and to the, and to my podcast and to iTunes and things like that as well, because it's, it's really important. This is really, I can't stress this enough. Um, you know, that if, if, if you're listening to this and you've heard Marie's story here and, and, and you know my story, then if you don't know my story, you need to buy my book. You can even get a free paperback copy at healendometriosisnaturallybook.com worth fourteen ninety nine, and you just have to pay the shipping and I ship all over the world. Or you can go to Animal, uh, Amazon Audible and download um, a book there. Read the book. What have you got to lose, you know, and, and hear how and what you know marie has implemented to to get herself pain free and back to living her life as she should be but um i i'm, I'm so delighted to be chatting to you and and uh, i'm looking forward to seeing you next time yes thank you i'm so sorry <laughs> what i've done is wait until my other half was actually here to assist because it's his computer um i'm a bit of a techno phobe to be honest so. <laughs> great. i do apologize but yes i'll uh, i'll make sure it's working next time <laughs> That, yeah, no, no, that that would be great because I think if people can see you as well, they can connect with you more as well. You know, they they can relate to you. But I mean, that, this is wonderful. Um, so thank you so much. I I, I really appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you for giving me the opportunity to to talk to you. It's absolutely wonderful. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.